Well, hello and welcome. And in this session, we're going to be looking at the church harvest party alternate. And we're getting to a day uh, where in a season where we see the harvest party um, alternate to he Halloween and the Halloween night. And we're just going to look at this because I have just share with you briefly how I was convicted uh, when I went to one of these harvest parties um, at a local chapel and assembly. And so we just have to we just have to question it and see if it really is uh, God's will and if it is righteous um, before we make a decision if we are going to uh, participate in both Halloween and these church harvest party alternates. Right? What do parents do? What should parents do? They have children. Um, they see advertising for harvest parties with a costume contest, lots of candy, food, fun and activities at a church. Um, what should you do? Should we go to it or not? My short answer is no. And I'll explain why uh, in the following presentation as you uh, we forbear this message. Um, my personal take of it is I have gone to them before, just trying to be unified, trying to uh, be with everybody else uh, in what they want to do. The majority decision was to absolutely have a harvest party uh, in the chapel with the kids and the logic being to spare them from the alternate, which would be the dark Halloween festival filled with Halloween trick-or-treating uh, for the kids at night. And so at first glance, it seems like it's harmless fun. Um, but I can tell you, based on my own observations, it was a carnal, fleshly indulgence. Um, and uh, the one chapel I had, they had the whole games, just candy being scrambled to all the kids. And um, I mean, even my kids were like spiritually convicted that this wasn't right. And so I really argue that we shouldn't buy into it or get ourselves lured into the spirit really in any way, uh, shape or form. And I don't believe that these modern churches should offer these harvest parties uh, based on it. I can see the logic, I can see the argument, but uh, at the end of the day, I don't believe they're good and they send the wrong message. And what do we find at these parties but costumes, candies, parties, and games? And so we as Christians have to under ask ourselves basic question, what's good about it? Right, like when I was at one, uh, a, a fellow brother asked as they were carving a jack-o'-lanterns on a table in the church, like, are we doing the right thing? And I was convicted and I said, you know, no, now that you bring up that question, there is no way that we're doing what is right. And, you know, so, you know, but the question is like, what is it, what is this whole idea of the carnival teach your children? right when you see can be candy being scrambled at a church what does it teach your children that, that this is really what life is about this is life at its best right indulging in carnal fleshly desires with rich junk food um you know and then you get into scary costumes or non-scary okay which one should i do is it okay if i just wear a costume as a farmer or is it okay if i do one as a witch right that becomes in the question and good luck on trying to regulate that with the masses as you go along. Um, I lived beside somebody that had just fanatical decorations all over his house of spiders, skulls, depictions of beheaded figurines, uh, spiders, bats, all these kinds of things littered all over his house. The spirit of it is very real and the fanatical nature of it is real among some people they get into it and it's just how it is what they know is this is greedy okay halloween and the whole idea of trick-or-treating or going out there is greedy the idea of can these scrambles are greedy and all these other indulgences and we can even see sensuality and lust mixed with this for people in older uh, festival parties um, and certainly there can be that kind of nature as well. Drugs, alcohol, and crime. Now, I was in this before I was a Christian, and even after, to a certain degree, would go to and find myself in Halloween parties of various ages. I trick-or-treated as a kid. Um, I got pulled into the spirit. I, like, I know what this is all about, and I can tell you it is not of Christ. 
it is most definitely of the world and we don't want to compromise with these uh, horrific uh, pagan glut festivals but the compromising church what do you know what is what, what a surprise they're going to go ahead and do it anyways right the compromising church will have a harvest party it looks so great of an alternate doesn't it and so we see it advertised. I see it at a local Baptist church not far from me advertising this. Come to this party. Let's all have a party. And at first glance, it seems noble and righteous to offer such a alternate. Um, you know, the kids can go to a chapel to get candy and have fun rather than pillaging the village in the dark and dressing up. And kids tend to dress up anyway. So a couple of these harvest parties, even in conservative church, brethren chapel assemblies, uh, still dressed up anyways. And so, you know, and candy and junk food was everywhere readily available in abundance uh, for the taking at these events too. Uh, stupid, goofy games like game, like donuts on a string and was even offered with the adults. It, it's just plain foolishness. And uh, like, I'll never ever go to any of them ever again. Um, and the one I'm referring to was probably like 10 years, 10 years ago that I went to. And it was just, I really saw the foolish vain nature of this indulgence that I wanted nothing to do with. I was spiritually convicted in my conscience. But if you're not, if you think it's okay, you're thinking, oh, I'm, you know, people like me are being too morbid and we don't know how to have fun. I can tell you what is going to happen is your conscience is going to be seared. Maybe it is already. And uh, that's a very dangerous position to be in. You need to read First Peter chapter, or sorry, First Timothy chapter 4 and really get it in your mind what's going on with the apostate church and the falling away of Christians as we approach the end of the world. Um, I can sympathize that this creates a dilemma for parents you know the, all the other friends are going but what do you mean we can't go all right oh you're going to be an outsider you're going to be a minority you're going to be the judgy one like there was unspeakable peer pressure to either compromise on this or compromise and indulge in these pagan glut festivals it's just how it is you know live a little let's let, none of us are perfect let's just have some fun here right and moreover when a knock comes at your door right what, what do you do if you're someone like myself that doesn't celebrate it what do you do um do you offer them treats you know what, what do you say and those are questions my answer is i just darken the lights pull the shutters and the blinds turn off exterior light and illumination and let it be clearly known to our neighbors that we don't we just don't believe in it we don't believe in the pagan ritual i don't believe in the greed the glut fest the the message it sends our precious little children that this is what life is all about. Um, everything about it is is dark and evil to the core, and uh, we want nothing to do with it, and I won't be pressured into having anything to do with it. And so, but with sensitivity, like we don't want to come across as judgy or sanctimonious with this stuff. I've been there and done it myself. I've confessed that to you in this message. Um, and, uh, but we learn. Christian faith is about sanctification and learning. I hope all of you are doing that. Learn more. Get more and more sensitive to this. Let your conscience grow and let it flourish more and more about this kind of stuff. And never yield to it. Don't compromise. And I think this is a good witness to the neighbors. And we get along good with our neighbors. And uh, many of them talk to us and deal with us. And, um, and the kids respect that and don't come to our home. They, they don't even bother. Um, we will stay home or order takeout dinner sometimes on that day or dinner out and then maintain alert status. We live in a very quiet area out in the more rural community. But I tell you, if you're in the city or near some of these drug infested areas of our city, you may want to maintain alert status. A lot of unspeakable crime happens on Halloween and good luck trying to find police to help you on Halloween. They are preoccupied with all kinds of complaints on that day, including vandalism and so on. Uh, pray perhaps on that day against the spirit of darkness of the Halloween and read scripture is an alternate idea. 
And be aware of Satanism and witchcraft as realities, not thrills. It's not a game. It's not an entertainment. The same with pictures of people that are blood-soaked or uh, that have been butchered. We have that happening in real time on battlefields, both in Europe and in the Middle East right now. This isn't a game or funny. This is something that brings us to tears and that we pray over. And um, overcome darkness with light. Um, we're winter solstice is right around the corner we are rapidly losing light as we head into the winter um, but we celebrate and want to be light of the world don't we salt and light let us be light of the world and not celebrate darkness with pagans or other people looking for thrills and entertainment be holy be set apart and hate all evil is our calling and just some other dangers and closing thoughts in this short presentation. Um, it is exciting and alluring, the whole idea of Halloween. I remember as a kid, like I lost sleep uh, thinking about it. And the uh, activities we would do, I had older brothers and uh, they were just in with it, knew what to do, where to go, to, to have the best time to get the most amount of junk food. Uh, and, uh, and we did it. And even back in those days, uh, there was drugs issues and candies being tainted with foreign substances. That was an issue back then. Imagine what it's like now when we have pot that's laced with candy that appears to be wrapped candy. And it's legalized marijuana in our society that looks like candy to a child is a major issue in our pro-pot civilization and democracy. And they've had kids hospitalized with being overdosed with THC uh, as a result of eating candy. Um, so there's that, plus there's the usual pranks of people putting needles and so on inside of the candy. So just like avoid that scene altogether. Why would you want to take that risk, um, if even if you don't agree with the other points? Um, and of course, dangers with kids and families on dark streets, right? Again, you're losing light. Uh, you have drivers that are stoned on marijuana and alcohol, especially on Halloween. And then you're going to throw in walking around with your kids or your family in street corners in and out of traffic uh, to uh, pillage the village and, and collect junk food from people. And again, indulging in junk food is not what life is about. A lot of people struggle with this. And, you know, sugar and childhood obesity are a major, major crises uh, and critical issues in our in our culture today, according to medical physicians and reports, and it's a growing problem. Okay, it's getting worse, not better. As is dental hygiene for many, especially those in poor precincts and demographics. Um, sugar is a huge issue, big problem, uh, and this whole winter, this whole carnival doesn't help. This whole pagan glut fest called Halloween doesn't um, help. Uh, exercise self-control which is so desperately needed um, and um, lastly trick-or-treats are expensive we talk about people living in inflation or trying to make ends meet or trying to balance a budget um, these are expensive and uh, one old youth pastor that uh, told me what he did on Halloween which included darkening the lights and pulling the shutters uh, he was a, a German guy and very, very thrift. And he didn't celebrate Halloween, not because he didn't think it was, he thought it was evil or whatever, but he just simply didn't have the budget to buy trick-or-treats. Um, and so him and his wife would just pull the, the curtains and turn the lights out and, uh, and just, you know, watch TV or do anything uh, in the back room. So... These are some fundamental reasons, and I just say stay away from the whole idea. Shun the whole thing and cancel it, and please the Lord. You know, I guarantee you there's nothing about Halloween that pleases the Lord. Um, so we are here to please the Lord and to exercise restraint, to um, walk diligently, and to be filled with self-control and moderation. And... Um, when we look at these things and despite all the delicacies besides all those sugary junk food 
chocolates that are filled with palm oil and other the stuff that's so bad for your blood vessels and your vascular system and your brain, we just say, no, thank you, and uh, turn our back on it. Um, so that's uh, the lesson today, and so may God bless us with these thoughts as we consider the Lord and ask for his blessings upon us as we pray in Jesus' name.